Hi friends, in the previous lecture what we have seen basically is that if there was a long column and it was suppose like this we had a long column like this and it was subjected to forces suppose P then if we laterally gave it certain deflection delta then at values of P to be less than PCR we saw that it's essentially elastic and once we take off the load P it is essentially retract to its vertical stable configuration but at P is equal to PCR what basically happens is that there's some sort of a neutral equilibrium in the fact that the column doesn't retract to its original position nor it bends indefinitely it stays static at that point so essentially at P is equal to PCR we have the neutral stable equilibrium now at P greater than PCR if we apply a load wherein this P is greater than the critical load then the column bends indefinitely and we found out the value of PCR which was essentially PCR was pi squared EI which is the flexural rigidity of the column by 4L squared for essentially a fixed and free type of end support the Euler critical load was this and if, if I apply a force greater than this Euler's critical load then this column will bend indefinitely right so this is the point of the Euler critical load right now one has to uh, from this equation one can see one thing that uh, PCR is a function of essentially the flexural rigidity and the length right and if the length is some sort of a greater length that is a long column so essentially the critical load will be lesser if a with the value of flexural rigidity is higher the critical load will have a higher value now this factor 4 right it essentially depends on the fixity or the rigidity of the end restraints for example here the end restraints are essentially one end is restrained by a fixed support and the other end is free right now depending on how much the fixity of this ends connections are this value of k this value basically depends and uh, if we if we if we solve certain uh, differential equation in certain different end condition con end conditions, for example, if suppose I have this as my hinge hinge connection, I have this as my fixed hinge connection, uh, then I have suppose a fixed fixed connection, and in the in this case, or the example I solved. Uh, fixed and I should say it's now in a stable equilibrium so uh, fixed free connection and for this for this the deflected pattern of the elastic line will essentially be like this wherein for a hinge hinge connection it will be like this for a fixed and hinge connection it will be essentially like this because the slope at this end is zero the slope at both this ends is equal to zero so it will be some kind of a thing like this and here it will be having a deflected pattern like this wherein this is equal to PCR right now uh, this we can solve differential equation essentially as we did in this case we can solve for this three and essentially we found find we can find that PCR for this case is equal to pi squared EI by L squared for this case PCR is equal to 2 pi squared EI by L squared for this case PCR is equal to 4 pi squared EI by L squared and for this case I know the value of PCR I have derived it to be equal to pi squared EI by 4 L squared now this factors here it's equal to 1 let us let us suppose that uh, I write this equation in a general form that is PCR is equal to pi squared EI by KL whole squared so the value of k for this case will be essentially equal to 1 for this case it will be equal to 1 by root 2 for this case it will be equal to k will be equal to 1 by 2 and for this case k will be equal to essentially 2 right so kl k is one factor that depends on the on the fixity of this end conditions and l depends on the length of the column the actual length of the column and the, the amalgamation of these two factors that is KL is essentially my effective length right effective length of the color and it is judged by the distance between the two inflection point for essentially 
in this figure, the length effective will be the distance between this point and this point, which is equal to essentially L. So for this, I have length effective to be equal to L. For this thing, I will have length effective to be equal to this, that is L by root 2, right? So length effective for this case will be the distance between the two inflection points. Now what is, what is basically inflection points? Inflection points, as we know from calculus, are those points where in the second derivative, it basically changes sign. So essentially the curve here changes sign. It, this changes from concave to convex. So this is one inflection point and so the distance between the two is effectively L by root 2. The distance between this and this, this two inflection points is L by 2. And the distance between uh, this, this here, effectively the length will be till here. So this will be my total length, wherein this will be equal to 2L. So length effective for this case will be equal to 2L, right? So depending on the, on, the, on, the, on the rigidity of the end condition, I have this effective length changing, right? Now we can see from here that uh, this one, this one is the, is the, is the case with least uh, rigidity of the end condition. So essentially the critical load that it can take in will be least because as the rigidity of the end condition is the least in this case, so the effective length will be higher in this case, right? And as the effective length is higher, essentially we know that the critical load or PCR will be greater because if KL is the effective length, if it's higher, obviously it's inversely related, so PCR will be, uh, if, uh, will, be will be lesser. So in this case, as okay, length effective is basically higher, so the PCR will have a lesser value. For this case, uh, the next case uh, after this, I would say, is this, wherein I put two hinges on both the ends. So essentially, in this case, I have length effective to be equal to L, right? So what I have that is that the critical load, the Euler critical load, will be equal to pi square EI by L square. The next is this, wherein I put, I replace this hinge by a, some sort of a fixed connection. So I, I implant greater rigidity to the end condition. And if I imply greater rigidity to the end condition, so effectively what it does is that it reduces my effective length because the distance between the two inflection points essentially reduces and as such I can take in a greater value of PCR. So effectively this will be 2 pi square EI by L square. And in the third case what I do is that I replace this hinge condition also by, uh, by some sort of a fixed condition. So essentially my effective length is, is uh, I, I, I would say is reduced more. And as it is reduced more effectively, the PCR value is the highest for this case. So this is all I would say for uh, this lecture. So effectively, I will, I will repeat this thing again. Depending on the end conditions, the end conditions are pretty important for the determination of Euler critical load. The Euler critical load, I should say, is determined by three basic things. Number one, you have EI as a flexural rigidity. Number two, you have the length the actual length of the column and number three you have the fixity now this fixity essentially determines the length effective and greater the fixity of the end conditions lesser will be the length effective as we can see from here greater the fixity of the end condition lesser will be the length effective or the distance between essentially the inflection points of the elastic curve and essentially greater will be the value of my Euler critical load right so this is all for this lecture. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you.